Oh yeah, when you come home and find that rough country box on your front porch, you know it's lift day. Hey, what's up guys? I'm Dan H and welcome to the project. Today we are getting a two inch budget boost lift on this WJ over here. And I know guys, I'm jumping the gun. Poor General Grievous back there has been waiting two years for its lift, but I really needed to get something done on this WJ, I'll show you why. Um, well, let's just take a look at this. <laughs> Those are the shocks on the WJ. So I wanted to get shocks and I figured might as well just get a little budget boost while I'm at it. So I got in this box a two inch budget boost lift and I got all four shocks. So let's open this up, see what it looks like. All right, rough country suspension systems. Yahoo. Let's see what this is. We got Rough Country part number 69530 99-04 WJ 2 to 3 inch lift kit. And looks like this. Oh yeah. There's the front spacers. Cool. Got instructions. Got the shocks, rear spacers, and hardware. Very nice. All right, so we're gonna get all this hardware on this vehicle. Let's uh, let's take a look at this. All right, so these are Moab wheels. I got these to replace the atrocious factory Overland wheels. Those are just disgusting. And I picked these up for about $100. I got five Moab wheels. The, uh, the tires are pretty much toast, but it's all right. It's good for now. They might pass inspection, but uh, I got these to keep this baby rolling. So uh, I need to lift this up because we got some rubbing issues in here, rubbing on this tire liner, the wheel well liner. And let's go around inside. I'll show you another problem. Well, here we go. <laughs> Here's the driver's side shock absorber. It's blasted right through the strut tower, and uh, that's no good. <laughs> of course, this one, that one's completely shot. So yeah, the main objective was to get the shocks, but what the heck, we'll put those spaces in while we're at it. All right, so I'm going to lift this thing up. We'll get this on jack stands, and then we will begin. All right, here is our setup. We use the jack to jack up the front axle. Then we went ahead and we blocked and used jack stands to hold up the vehicle on the frame. We took off the front tires, put them under the frame also, just as an extra safety net. And don't forget to chuck the back wheels, keep them blocked, and e-brake also, safety first. So now we got the whole front end up in the air and we could control the height of this axle by the jack. So next, we're gonna remove the shock. All right, front shock has two 13 millimeter nuts underneath. And we're also gonna disconnect the sway bar on the front. Now this is a 15 millimeter bolt and the nut on the back is 18 millimeter. There we go. Comes right out when you take that pressure off it. All right, once the sway bar is disconnected, you can let the front end all the way out, and then the front shock just kind of pops right out. And now it's dangling. Uh, we are going to go up above and disconnect the upper shock bolt. And guys, if you are blessed to have the ability of a lift, make sure you take that upper bolt off first. You won't be able to get to it when this thing is up on your lift. But for me, I am down in the dirt in the driveway, and that's not a problem. So I will take this strut off now. Thank you. 
And I know that wasn't the most elegant way of removing a shot, guys, but I don't have time to waste with spinning bolts, so it is what it is. There we go. That is out. Nasty. All right, now I'm gonna use these spring compressor kits. Oof. Dusty. <laughs> Hello, old friend. Been a while since I lifted a Jeep and needed these things. Hey, Joe. Yes, you do. What day is it today? Yeah. I don't know. It could be. It's Jeep day. There we go. Now, this has got an extreme amount of potential energy, so don't put your fingers anywhere in the direction of where this could expand to. Very dangerous. Oof. Gross. We got the rust. Let's remove the top isolator. There we go. Oh, that was easy. Rest that right there. All right, guys, here's where the real fun begins. We get to put in our lift. Now, this is the Budget Boost Spacer. It's not the most beefiest piece of metal, but hey, I'm not having an off-road rig. You know, this is just uh, something to give me a little boost. That's it, man. Nothing too crazy. I'm not really wheeling this bad boy, so this should do just fine. And they gave you these little 19-millimeter self-tappers. We're just going to go plug this right in. There we go, easy peasy. That's on there, now we gotta put on our isolator. I'm just gonna lube it up with some WD-40. There we go, why not? Make everything nice and rust proof. All right, now we're gonna plop our spring right back in here. Exactly just the opposite of how we took it out. There we go. It's right in there. Ah, right. we just jacked it up a little bit. Take some tension off of these spring compressors. Now I could loosen these up, get them out of the way. Ta-da! All right. Axe is going back up again. It's time to line up the sway bar. That's pretty much a game of ups and downs until you get the suspension exactly where you need it to be. There's no right or wrong way to align things. However you decide to wiggle your parts back together. There we go. Good. Nice. All right, now we get to install this a beautiful new shock. So shock and lower hardware. Let's dunk that right where it's supposed to go. Drop these bolts down. I'll bring it in so you can see. Oh, that would help. A good one, Dan. One and two. And coming up from the bottom, we'll put on our washer and our nylon lock nuts. They are both 13 millimeter. So I'll put the Put one on the bottom on the impact, probably use a deep dish, and I'll just grab a 13 millimeter socket to hold the top down. Now the top side gets its washer and big rubber bushing. 
Go ahead and put that down. And now here's the fun part. You have to snip the cable and guide this thing up. <laughs> awesome. And here we go. Other bushing up here. Push that down. Sorry, it's hard to see. My apologies. And the top washer. Come on, baby. Okay. Got it. All right. And I'm just going to tighten this down with the impact until the bushing squishes out even with the washer. Very nice, very nice. All right guys, here we go. One last look at the completed passenger side. Got a brand new shock, looking good, nice bushings. Everything is solid, new hardware, I like it. And here we go, we got our new spacer, we got our budget boost, then the isolator, then the spring, then the bottom isolator. We got the sway bar reattached, everything is looking good. <laughs> Except for this chewed up wheel well lining, but I'll replace that later, no biggie. Hey, you know what? You've seen one front lift, you've seen them all. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and do this side by my lonesome and then I will go ahead and tune you back in for the rear get that rear going on and you know what I forgot to measure the height Ugh, I hate when I do that but oh well we know it's a lift we've seen them a million times right guys all right I'll see you when I get to the rear all right guys the front is done it is looking really good Look at that space between the wheel and the vehicle now. And there we go. You can see the Rough Country label sticking out of that shock. We got the spacer right there. Very happy with the way that's sitting. And we're going to do the back now. So, obviously, I already went ahead and lifted up the back. We got it on jack stands, propped up, nice and safe on wood blocks. And you always want to use the frame, guys. You don't want to use the rocker panel because... <laughs> It might go right through the vehicle because there's nothing left. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Stay tuned for a later video <laughs> on a rocker rebuild. So yeah, we're gonna we're just gonna ignore that for now. But here we go. Got the rear lifted up, tires are off under the vehicle for extra safety, and we're gonna use our jack to move the rear up and down as needed to get to the springs. So alright, here we go. Just gonna put these spacers on and the rear shocks on. It's gonna be great. All right, I'm gonna do the bottom sway bar bolt first because that's the easiest to get to. We got 18 in the back and 15 in the front, and I'm using my big dog DeWalt because this is probably crusted on. Oh, there we go. Not too bad. But yeah, this thing is crusty <laughs> if you wanted to know. There we go. That's disconnected. All right, now I'll do the lower shock. There we go. All right, now I'm gonna remove the shock completely with the upper bolt. It's 15 millimeter also. There we go. Look at these guys. I think these are original Mopar shocks. This probably has never been changed on this vehicle. <laughs> Yikes. Ah, you know what helps to get that side down? Lifting up the other side. That's the key right there. All right, let me address this nastiness. Remove the lower spring isolator and discard as it will not be reused. See photo two. Thank God. <laughs> this is nasty. <sighs> gonna be here till tomorrow it's infused in the metal if I remove this there's gonna be nothing left to mount the spring to Whew. whoa
Nasty. All right, I got some Rust-Oleum Satin Stop Rust Paint. <laughs> this ain't gonna do much. This is really far gone, but gotta try something, you know? All right, I'm gonna drop our rear spacer in. <laughs> Plenty of room to work with because of all the rust has <laughs> been sucked up. Yikes. And we'll just pop in our new bump stop or old bump stop. It's kind of pathetic, actually. <laughs> There's nowhere for it to mount anymore. Rot it away. <sighs> that should be all right. Pathetic. <laughs> all right, we'll get our spring back in. Now, the isolator is still in there rubber isolator under this cup and well that that ain't going anywhere it's seized in with rust too all right we attach the rear sway bar And now we'll do the bottom rear shock. There we go. I think that did it. And that old 15 millimeter bolt. And for the top, I'm not just going to snip it and send it like the front. The hole is easier found when adjusting it with your jack. Now we snip. Jackpot. All right. Looking good, guys. Excellent. All right, now I'm gonna do the next side and I'll catch you guys in a little bit.
All right, guys, there you have it. There is my Rough Country Budget Boost on my WJ. It's so much fun already. I could actually drive this thing without having these big Wrangler wheels rub against the wheel well. So that problem is solved. Also solved that nasty shock problem. Check this out. Look at that. I can't even push it down. Nice stiff shocks. No more ugly walrus sound. That was ridiculous. I can't believe that the previous owner had driven so much on those gross shocks. But this thing is a driver now. It is really good. Still waiting on my plates to come in the mail. I guess that, uh, that nasty thing is still holding up everything. So mm -hmm. we won't speak about that. We're only looking forward to good things like Jeeps. So that's it, man. I am so happy. Uh, final thoughts? Yeah, it's a kind of cheaper cheaper lift, cheaper quality, but it's perfect for a road Jeep. I'm not going to abuse this thing off-road. Um, the, uh, the money was right on the mark. I think it's about $230 eBay special shipped. Uh, thank you, Cousin Matt, for supplying it. And uh, yeah, really appreciate that. Congrats on your baby girl. Shout out. So uh, yeah, that's it, guys. Couldn't be happier. Um, I would say when you're installing the front spacer, go easy, hand tighten that little 19 millimeter threaded self tapper. Uh, you don't need to go too far. And with that, it's you know held in place by the springs, so you don't have to crank it down. Uh, I highly recommend a spring compressor for the fronts. You don't even need the spring compressor for the rear. And uh, simple stuff, guys. This uh, this lift should only take you maybe two, three hours if it's your first time. Uh, a seasoned veteran <laughs> should should do this in about an hour. No big deal. Um, yeah, that's it. Thank you so much for watching this video, guys. Remember to like, subscribe, share, and I'll catch you guys on the next project. Peace. Nothing says Jeep was here like a pile of rust in your driveway. <laughs> Yikes.